If you've been keeping up with Blue Bloods, you might already be aware of the infamous Reagan family drama and how no one is better equipped at handling it than our very own Aaron Reagan. But did you know that Bridget Moynihan, the actress who plays our favorite baddie, is actually really similar to her character in real life? In this video, we'll dive into how the two are basically the same person. First up, how exactly are the two alike? Ever since it first aired on CBS in 2010, Blue Bloods has had fans hooked. With the perfect mix of family drama and intense action scenes, this New York-based cop series never ceases to take you by surprise. Also, the show stays true to real life, which is a tricky feat all on its own, especially regarding the law enforcement scenes. And who better to portray the perfect assistant district attorney who's basically the moral and legal compass in this multi-generational law enforcement family than Bridget Moynihan, aka Aaron Reagan. However, what most of you might not be aware of is that Moynihan is, in fact, very similar to her character Aaron Reagan. Yup, you heard that right. The two share very similar characteristics which is part of what makes Moynihan's performance increasingly flawless. For starters, she recently admitted in an interview with Glamour that while she isn't as uptight as her on-screen persona, she did grow up in a Catholic household surrounded by several brothers and boy cousins, stating that she was surrounded by men my whole life, much like Reagan, who also grew up with two brothers who are both police officers and a single father who is the police chief. Plus, she's the middle child both in real life and on the show, acting as both a mediator and the glue that holds the family together. Moynihan's also a single mom trying to stand her ground in a male-dominated field, all while raising a child on her own. Next up, how does Moynihan feel about Reagan? As far as Moynihan's concerned, she adores playing Aaron Reagan and says that the character's confidence is something that speaks out to her, especially considering how Aaron's never one to back down from a fight, no matter how challenging it may be. There's also the fact that she never tolerates anyone looking down on her, simply because she's a woman in a field that's traditionally very male-dominated. This can be best observed in season 10, where Aaron starts to rethink her life decisions after a particularly bad car accident, which ultimately makes her reconcile with her ex-husband Jack, played by Peter Herman. Then there's the infamous family dinner scene, where she calls out her father and brothers for not taking her job seriously. Importantly, Moynihan admitted she admires her character's traits tremendously and that she's learned to appreciate the law ever since she began playing the role of a district attorney. She also added that at one point, she seriously considered becoming a lawyer, only if it wasn't so ominous and scary and overwhelming. We can definitely relate to that. Moving on, what can we expect from Blue Bloods Season 13? The latest season premiered last week on the 7th of October, with only one episode released yet, and there's already so much going on. Warning, spoilers ahead. We start the season by putting Reagan in the hospital, and two relatives adamant about finding and putting the one responsible to justice. To break it down, what we know so far is that Jamie, played by Will Estes, is working on a domestic violence case that ends up being connected to the murder of Aaron's key witnesses, making her turn to Danny to investigate. They then find out that the witness was actually Joe's CL. The tea just keeps getting spicier. Afterwards, Andre, the enforcer of the defendant in Aaron's case, ends up kidnapping and murdering the witness's wife before he escapes. This leads to Jamie tracking Andre down, but unfortunately getting shot at as well while trying to save Danny. He's rushed to the hospital, and later, it's revealed that the bullet was actually near Jamie's spine, and despite the surgery being a success, there's a risk that he might be paralyzed. Yikes. Danny then tracks down Andre with Joe, and the pair talk about the highs and lows of being a cop and learning to cope with situations like this before they finally catch up to Andre and get a few good punches in while arresting him. Classic. Up next, what about Aaron and Jack's relationship? Even though Aaron is desperately preoccupied with winning the race for district attorney, the latest episode has revealed a heartwarming reunion between everyone's favorite couple, as Aaron is seen going out to dinner with her ex-husband, Jack Boyle, in a secluded place, where they get to enjoy themselves outside of their jobs as well. The couple can also be seen flirting with each other at the bar and playing arcade games together, hinting that the relationship could have a high chance of being rekindled once again. We're as excited about that as you are. Also, Jack introduces Aaron to Warren Bradford, who claims that he admires her and her principles and would like to support her campaign, even offering her a $3 million contribution. However, that actually exceeds the contribution limits, so he says he'd create a PAC to help her get elected as district attorney. Aaron is suspicious regarding the exchange, and asks the guy what he's really after, to which Jack replies that they'd only like a frankly honest conversation, and that not everyone has an ulterior motive. A little suspicious, but we'll let it slide and see where this leads, considering it's only the first episode. In other news, first up, what can we expect from the second episode? If you're like us, you've already caught up with the first episode and must be wondering what lies ahead this week. Well, look no further, as CBS released an official synopsis for the second episode titled First Blush, along with a mini-teaser. The synopsis 
states that Frank basically decides not to endorse Aaron's run for district attorney, making Aaron reevaluate her father's choices as tensions rise in the family. Meanwhile, Danny and Baez look into a bloody crime scene at a hotel, and Jamie takes on a new role as he starts working at a new job as a field intelligence sergeant, which requires him to keep secrets from his family. Yikes, we all know how that will turn out. Do you think Jamie will be able to handle this sudden change, considering the amount of stress he's under already? We can't wait to find out. Although the teaser doesn't offer much information yet, apart from Jamie's new role and a snippet of a Sunday family dinner, we can definitely count on expecting a lot of tension. Make sure to stream Blue Blood's second episode for season 13, which airs on 14th October on CBS. Up next, did Bridget Moynihan meet up with ex-Tom Brady? The Tampa Bay quarterback Tom Brady has currently been going through a rough patch regarding his marriage with his wife, Giselle Bündchen, with rumors about a divorce flying around as well. The football star was recently seen taking an 11-day leave from training in August to go on vacation with Bündchen in the Bahamas. However, he was soon spotted leaving with his eldest son, John Edwards, to meet his ex-girlfriend and John's mother, Bridget Moynihan, in the Hamptons in order to celebrate their son's 15th birthday. Brady was also accompanied by his other two kids, Benjamin Rain and Vivian, as they all celebrated and rejoiced. Although the couple has revealed nothing yet, the whole thing seems suspicious, especially considering the fact that Bunchen was the only one absent from this brief family reunion. Lastly, is Moynihan back on Sex and the City? Sex and the City is back once again in And Just Like That, as we see our favorite women transition from their friendship in their 30s to an increasingly complicated one in their 50s. Fans would be pleased to know that along with most of the original cast, the HBO Max reboot features our favorite villain, Bridget Moynihan, as Natasha Naginsky once again. The actress revealed how she didn't hesitate for a second when she got the call to reprise her role as Mr. Big's ex-wife. How exciting! She makes her iconic return in the third episode when Carrie Bradshaw discovers that Natasha's late husband has left her $1 million to his ex. This causes Carrie to go through a nervous breakdown, making her spiral and end up stalking Natasha online and even going as far as asking her to meet up, not only via email, but through an Instagram DM as well. However, her desperate attempts result in her getting blocked, but that doesn't stop her. Carrie even drops by Natasha's workplace and inquires about her whereabouts, to which her assistant explains that Natasha's currently in Rome and can't meet with her. Spoiler alert, she isn't actually in Rome, and the episode ended with Carrie bumping into her on the Upper West Side. Yikes. Well, that's a wrap for this video. What do you think about Blue Bloods Season 13? Do you think Erin will manage to become District Attorney without her father's help? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. We'll see you in the next one.